fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'll Silver. Hey! Two men faced each other across a paper-littered desk in the executive office at the state capitol. One was Governor Hill, the other the Lone Ranger, who wore the clothing of a businessman and a disguise in place of his familiar mask and riding outfit. It was a disguise with which the governor, an old friend, had become familiar. Clasping his caller's hand, he exclaimed, The Lone Ranger, this is indeed an honor. The honor is mine, Governor Hill. How can I help you? I called you here because I want to find a fugitive. Well, that's a job for your state rangers. Not in this case. Sit down, sit down. Oh, thanks. The law enables me to send officers anywhere to track down an outlaw, but it makes no provision for remedying its mistakes. And the man I want is a fugitive from injustice. Please explain, Governor. Several years ago, a young fellow named Tom Wade was convicted of killing a rancher during a feud in the Pipe River Valley. Yes, just before he was to be executed, he broke jail. He never was recaptured. I see. Recently, the chief witness against Wade made a deathbed confession, admitting that he himself committed the crime. I immediately signed a pardon for Wade, but I lacked means of locating him and delivering it. I take it that Wade has nothing to fear from the law now. Well, that's true, but it must be assumed that he doesn't know it and is still living the tortured life of an escaped convict for whom the executioner waits. Do you have his description? Here's an old wanted notice, but it's too vague to be of any help in finding a man who's probably changed his name and appearance. Well, uh, what about his relatives? I was coming to that. He has a mother who was in to see me as soon as she heard about the pardon. She couldn't tell me much. Even a little will help in a case like this. Well, she said she had heard from her son but once, and then indirectly. Several months ago, a strange young woman, whom she describes as having red hair, called on her. Now, this girl gave her a sack of gold dust and a message from Wade, but didn't disclose his whereabouts. Gold dust suggests a mining camp. Yes, but there are mines from Montana to the border. A red-headed girl traveling alone in this country would be noticed. Give me the pardon, Governor. Thunderstone was a community where food and entertainment were in demand both day and night. The restaurant, known as Slim and Red's Place, 
had been locked up just long enough to allow the proprietors to clean the floor, reset the tables, and chalk a new bill of fare on the blackboard. The girl was known as Red because of her flaming red hair. Her partner, Slim, wore a full beard, which contrasted with the youthfulness of his eyes. Red, this place is better than a gold mine. I struck it rich when I found you. Oh, I'm the lucky one, darling. I'd still be working in the Lady Fair dance hall if you hadn't come along. We could be riding double on top of the world. Only I'm Tom Wade. Yeah, Tom Wade. Sometimes I wish you'd never told me that. I had to, honey. Feeling the way I do about you. Tom, I know you never dry gulched anyone. The law says I did, and that's what counts. I never can go home, never see my mother. I wish you'd brought her here when you went to see her. Your ma wouldn't come. She was afraid of being followed. Why, it was dangerous enough for me to come back. How so? I got too much attention, Tom. After all, I could be trailed. Why, why maybe the law's tracing you right now. I'll never be any safer than I am in Thunderstone. With gunfights and robberies going on every day, Sheriff Madden isn't checking up on fellas who keep out of trouble. Anyhow, he's my friend. Friend or not, he'd arrest you, Tom, if somebody told him your real name. Now look, Red. Here he is now. He's coming here. What for? He knows we're locked up. Oh, quit shaking so. Let him in. Yeah. Just a second, Sheriff. Howdy, Red. Howdy, Slim. Hello, Howdy, Sheriff. Sheriff. Say, what's been going on here? You two look guilty or something. Oh, we've been fixing to jack up our prices. <laughs> well, that's robbery, all right. But what I come to say is that from now on, I can't send anybody after that chuck you've been cooking for my prisoners. You mean we'll have to deliver it? I reckon so. That trusty who's been getting it finished his stretch today. We're mighty busy at mealtime, Sheriff. Well, fetch it over when you can. Figure on bread, beans, and coffee for 20 tonight. All right, Sheriff. You leaving now? Yep. I'm keeping an eye on the Lady Fair dance hall. Now that place is always getting shot up. From now on, everyone who has a hand in a ruckus there goes to jail. Well, <laughs> so long. So long, Adios. Sheriff. Red, I, I... I don't like the idea of taking Chuck to those prisoners. I've seen enough jailhouse. I know, Tom, I know. But we have to keep the Sheriff from getting suspicious. He had me scared for a minute. Yeah. It'll always be like that if you stick with me. Just the same. I'm sticking. Some weeks later, the Lone Ranger, accompanied by Toto, but still disguised, rode into Thunderstone. They had painstakingly traced the red-headed girl by following stage routes and making inquiries among the drivers and agents. But one glance at the crowded streets of the gold-mad town told them their search might yet be futile. As they headed their horses toward a corral, the Lone Ranger said, I oh, know, there's only one thing to do. That's visit every place you can. Ah, uh, me savvy. We have to be careful about asking questions. The girl and Wade are here together and learn we're looking for them. Before we can make our purpose known, they'll dodge us. Me go with you? No, we'll work separately and meet at this corral. Come, Silver. Come, come on, boy. Come on. The Lady Fair dance hall was packed to the doors. Mingling with the crowd, the Lone Ranger watched and listened, as he had done in other places of entertainment along the street. He saw several professional gamblers and gunmen whose names he knew, but nothing that he could connect with his search came to his attention. Then an aged swamper with a scrawny body and watery eyes sidled up to him and tugged his sleeve. Mister, let me get behind you. What's the trouble, old-timer? See that feller holding an empty glass? Yes, he's headed this way. He's been riding me ever since he hit town. Now he's after me again. Oh, I know him. To stand still. Hey, move, stranger. I want that old swapper. What for? I'm going to shoot this glass off the top of your head. Stand over against the wall. Uh, don't make me do that. Get over there, I said. Put that gun back. You keep out of this or I'll drill you. No, you won't. Oh, sickle man, you're twisting it off. Get loose of that gun. No, I'm shot. Let me through. Hey, here comes the sheriff. What's going on here? That fella shot me. Grab a gun and shot me. No, oh, my leg. Sheriff, he only has a scratch. He got it by triggering his gun while I was disarming him. Here's the gun. Yeah. What was the idea of jumping him? He's a Texas bad man, known as Dutch Landers. He was abusing an old swamper. That's a lie. We'll see about that. Where's the swamper? He lit out. 
Did any of you gents see how this ruckus started? We didn't see nothing. I was with All right. Come on, you two. You're going to jail. Wait a minute. You're making a mistake by arresting me. I can find that swamper. I'll do the finding, mister. Till then, I'm holding you for disturbing the peace. Hey. Well, Sheriff, I came here on business for Governor Hill. <laughs> business in a dance hall. <laughs> well, you're just getting yourself in worse with that kind of malarkey. Well, what about me? I didn't do nothing. If you're Dutch Landers, like he says, you've done plenty. The federal marshal wants you for shooting a soldier. That means the rope. Now, let me get after that, hombre. I'll break his neck right now. No, you don't. Now, get going, both of you. Clear the way, gents. Right. Open the door. With the sheriff stubbornly refusing to listen further, the Lone Ranger chose to go to jail rather than make a break which would endanger the success of his mission. Shortly after he and Landers had been locked inside the cell block, Tom Wade entered the sheriff's office burdened with pails of food. The sheriff greeted the restaurant man with a broad grin. Well, Slim, uh, haven't found a trusty yet, but I got two more customers for you. I've got Chuck enough for all. Tell the turnkey to unlock. Slim's coming through. All right, Sheriff. Don't keep me waiting. This coffee's plenty hot. Yeah, I'm opening my door. Anybody shut up in the cells? No, but make them stand inside and wait their turn. Come on, Slim, we stop. Get back where you bunk, boys. I'm starting at the first cell. Howdy, fella. You're new here. That's right. Somehow you don't look like a jailbird. <laughs> Perhaps I'm not. Innocent men have been jailed before. <laughs> Ombre, you said something. Hand me your can and cup. For a moment, the Lone Ranger and the man he had set out to find faced each other, wholly unaware of the ironic drama of their meeting. Then Wade passed on. Hurry, Slim. I'm hungry enough to eat a hard-boiled food. With shouts and the rattle of tinware marking his progress along the tier, Tom Wade reached the last cell. Seeing that its occupant lay motionless on a bunk, he put down his pails and stepped inside. You sick fella? Eat it. I don't want any of your dry bread and fish water. It's better checked than you get in most pokies. How do you know? Hey, I've run into you before. Not me. Yeah, I remember now. In the Pipe River Jail. You're Tom Wade. No, no, I'm not. You can't fool me. I'm Dutch Landers. I sailed next to you when you beat the news for busting out. You're loco. I'm getting out of here. You move and I'll yell for the sheriff. Oh, don't do that. Don't give me away. Well, I won't. If you help me get out of here. What kind of help do you want? Look, Wade, you bring the chuck in here. It'd be a cinch for you to smuggle me a gun. Give me a little time, Dutch. Time for what? If you're not here tonight with a loaded six-shooter for me, I'm going to turn you in. Now, it's a gun for me. Or a rope for you. A few minutes later, Wade was with his partner in the back room of the restaurant. Pale and trembling, he told of Lander's threat, asking again and again... What'll I do, Red? Suppose you took him a gun. You killed somebody, maybe the sheriff, and I'd be to blame. Would you rather go back to Pipe River than have that happen? It's an awful choice, Red, but I guess I would. After what I've been through, I couldn't stand to have anyone's death on my conscience. Yeah, I know, Tom. You're too good for your own good. Everything was looking fine, and then this had to happen. Talk isn't helping. You'll have to make a run for if it. If I do, Landers will talk tonight. That won't give me enough of a start to beat a posse. I, I don't know the mountains. You know the old diggings in Shinbone Creek. I worked them before they petered out. You go there and hide till you hear from me. Listen, I, I thought I heard a noise outside the door. I'll see. What was it? An Indian just ducked out of the kitchen. He likely stole a butcher knife. Red, I... I might as well stay here with you until they come knocking on the door. You go and get a horse while I rustle you some grub. They'll find me sooner or later. Not if I can help it. And I can. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. The Lone Ranger, wearing a disguise, was a prisoner in the Thunderstone Jail, arrested while trying to deliver a pardon to Tom Wade. He was unaware of events which had forced Wade to leave his red-headed sweetheart and take refuge in the mountains. Neither did he know that as night fell, Tonto had appeared at the jail. The Indian stood outside the cell block door, talking to the turnkey. Oh, me know you got my friend here. Yeah, what does he look like, Indian? Well, him big fella. Good clothes. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know the one you mean. Well, the sheriff isn't here, but yeah, I reckon I can let you see your pa without his say-so. Oh, not good. Hey, give me that shooting eye of yours, and I'll call him out. Uh-uh, here. Here, you take it. Hey, you in number one cell. Come here. All right. Hello, Toto. How? Stand right there. I keep the door open a while. Kimosabe. Yes. Me fine red-headed girl. Where? Her partner in restaurant. Called Slim and Red's place. Me think Slim feller, Tom Wade. And it was Wade who delivered food here this noon. Well, him in plenty trouble. Me hear girl tell him to hide. That's bad. If you fellas are talking about Red from the eating place, here she comes now. How come you're packing that chuck, Red? Slim's away. Yeah, I don't like letting a woman go back to the cells. And, you know, I'm busy here. Don't you worry about me. I can handle tough fellows. All right, go on. But if anyone gets smart, sing out. Well, one moment, miss. I want to tell you something. Save it, mister. Howdy, boys. Well, I'll be jiggered. It's great. Hey, boys, we got a waitress in our hotel. <laughs> Where's that hombre who got shot? I'll serve him first. That critter, he ain't hurt, but you'll find him a bunking in the far cell. Hey, wait, I'll carry your pail. Thanks, but I'll manage. Here's your grub, fella. Where's that critter who brought it before? What's the difference? It's run out on me. I'll fix it. Now, hold on. I've got what you asked him for. The gun? You're looking at it. Well, easy, woman. It's pointed at me in the hammer's back. What's more, I'm pulling the trigger, you vomit. No, don't shoot. It's the only way I can keep you from telling on my partner. And I'm not letting him die on your account. I won't tell. Give me a chance. Get up off your knees and take it. I'm getting up. Now, you take this house. Come on, feet. Oh, I can't see oh, Shut up. I got the gun now. You, you, if you're staying in front of me, get going. Look, he's pushing Red. He's got a gun. He's making a break. We're all going out. All right, but let that girl alone. I'm running this when I plug the turnkey, rush the door. We're ready. Put out that lantern. There it goes. Hey, Red, you all right? It's a jailbreak. Lock the door. I got him. Now, come on, everybody. Let's go. Let's get Lock going. Lock Nobody's stopping us. Hello, lock us in. Me not find key. Out of the way, you two punks. Dig it. Unarmed as they were, the Lone Ranger and Tonto fought grimly to hold the cell block door. They beat back the first rush, only to be hurled aside by another. Come on, let's Erupting go. into the jail office and carrying Landers and his captive along in their midst, the prisoners gained the street. As they scattered, seizing horses wherever they could, the Lone Ranger sprang to the side of the fallen turnkey, while Tonto ran to the front door. That fella get away with girl, both on horse. Turnkey will live. Which way did Landers head with her? Let him go north. I'll leave a note for the sheriff, then we'll follow them. At the corral, the Lone Ranger stripped off his disguise and put on a mask and riding clothes. As he buckled on his guns, which he had left in his saddlebags, Tonto stood by with the horses. Oh, you think Crook got gun in jail? The girl called Red must have taken it in. Well, me not savvy that. Me hear her give warning to jailer. Whatever happened, she didn't help him willingly. Where you think him take her? The only one way he can get out of the mouth is if he keeps going north. That's by following Shinbone Creek. Other fellows all head south to good trails. Landers probably figured on that. The posses will follow them. Isn't that right. All right, I'm ready. Steady, big fella. Easy. One, two, three. The mumps count. The next day dawned under the menace of a gathering storm. Black clouds dropped over the mountain peaks to the roll of distant thunder. Then suddenly, like ranging shots from a machine gun, bursts of heavy raindrops churned up the water of Shinbone Creek and splattered the rocks where Dutch Landers and his captive had dismounted. The outlaw looked at a string of miners' shacks on the creek bank just ahead. He grinned wolfishly. Red, I'm in luck. This rain will wash out my trail sign. There's a mining camp close. What about it? I need ammunition and grub. I aim to get them there. Then you better aim again. Those shacks have been empty for months. The diggings have played out. How do you know? I've been hearing mine talk every hour of the day. Well, I'm taking a look anyhow. You're wasting time. You'd better ride on. Seems mighty queer you're thinking about what's best for me. 
Knowing what you do about Tom Wade, I don't want you caught again, you bombing. I guess you don't know that. But I'm down to my last cartridge. And I gotta be sure there's nobody there. Now you walk ahead of me and I'll leave the horse. Come on. Why don't you let me go? It's still good protection from bullets. And if the law dogs catch up with me, maybe I can trade you to them and save my skin. I should have plugged you when I had the chance. Hey, I smell bacon frying. It's coming from that shanty there. Why are you crazy? Knock on the door. I'll do the talking. Knock, I said. There's nobody there. Red, what are you doing here? Watch out. You're covered, mister. What? Well, if it isn't Tom Wade. So it's you again. He's got me prison. There goes your horse. Let him go. You're not getting the drop on me. He'll head back to town. By the time he gets there, nobody can backtrack him. What do you want, Dutch? Something to eat first. Then you'll hear the rest. A little later, the Lone Ranger and Toto found an overhanging rock several miles from the old camp and stopped their horses in its shelter. The rain was beginning to slacken, but it had left the creek bank a trackless stretch of sand. The masked man pointed. Yeah, it's useless to look for tracks now. Well, maybe fella double bank. Maybe him hide someplace while we go by. That's true. We better separate. Oh, King Wasabi. Yes, me here, folks. There's a riderless horse coming. We'll head him off. Come on, Silver. Get him on scout. Meet Trident. I've got his bridle. Oh, oh, oh. Don't try. Oh, oh, there he is. Oh, that's no miner's horse. Ah. And him got three white feet. Name his horse Lander Steel. We'll backtrack him. Come on, Silver. Get him on scout. It stopped raining, and at first it was a simple matter to follow the back trail of the horse with three white feet. The Lone Ranger led the way with Toto riding close behind. Then there was a change in the nature of the ground. It was harder, and the tracks were less distinct. The masked man brought Silver to a slow walk for a hundred yards or so, then signaled a halt. Oh, Silver, what's your fella? Oh, fella. Lost it. Let me come up. Toto, this may prove more difficult than we thought. Easy, Scott, easy, fella. Me study ground close. Maybe find sign a horse. From that point on, the masked man and his Indian companion had to call on all their skill at reading trail signs. In one place, the Lone Ranger found a horsehair caught on the rough bark of a tree. You passed here, Toto. A few yards away, a flat stone showed damp mud on the top side. And this stone overturned. Good. We'll keep going in this direction. A little later, a newly broken twig furnished a clue, and after that, some bent down grass. The two proceeded through a woods and across an open stretch. Progress was painfully slow. At times, it seemed like a hopeless task to follow the back trail of the horse. But perseverance was rewarded, and soon the masked man and Toto saw a cabin. Dutch Landers leaned back in a makeshift chair, thoroughly enjoying the cruel turn of events, which had made him master of both Tom Wade and the girl named Red. They waited silently until he spoke. That eating place of yours must make a heap of money. What are you driving at? I want money, Red. Money, a horse, and a lot of other things. Wade's going to get them for me. How much money? I'll settle for 10000 We won't pay it, will we, Red? He can't turn me in without sticking his own neck out. I can write, fella. A little letter to the sheriff would finish you off without any danger to me. We'll have to pay the varmint. Where's your horse, Wade? Stabled in the next cabin, and it's ready to ride. And you're going to town pronto. Don't get any ideas about skipping the country, because I'm holding Red here till you come back with everything I want. <laughs> so long, Red. So long, partner. Well, Sorrel Top, I don't need you any longer. What do you mean? I mean that when Wade comes back, you don't have to be alive. And you won't be. Help! Yell all you want to, he's gone. You're getting all you ask for. Why do you want to kill me? Listen, you red-headed hash slinger. You threw a gun on me. You made me crawl. And I'm going to get square for that. You can't make me crawl. Go on and shoot. All right, you little... A masked man. Got that gun, Landers. Not for you, mister. That was his last shot, masked man. You haven't got me yet. Oh, no. I'll take it. No. That put him down to stay. Do you want any more, Landers? Uh, I can't get up, Red. Are you all right? 
Darling, how did you get here? I ran into this Indian, the masked man. They turned me back. He was hubby. Yeah. Me think sheriff coming. Get, partner. Get going while you can. Hold it, all of you. Trouble's over, sheriff. There's Dutch landed on the floor. Hey, you're wearing a mask. Don't let that disturb you. I left a note that brought you to Shinbone Creek. Well, now I savvy some things, but how did Landers get that gun? Help me up and I'll tell you. Well, all right. Ah, now, let's have it. That woman brought the gun to the jail. She tried to plug me because I know about her partner. That critter that you call Slim. He's Tom Wade and he's under a death sentence. You're lying, Landers. Sheriff, you'll have to accept his story. Huh? Well, then I've got to arrest Slim. Now, wait. That isn't all of it. Otto, did you bring that envelope from my saddlebag? Uh, here. Let me got it here. Good enough. Here, read this, Sheriff. Hey. Well, well this here is a pardon. Yeah. It's for Tom Wade. It says he's innocent. What's that? Pardon? But, Tom, did you hear that? Oh, it's almost too good to be true. Now, if I could beg a pardon of the critter I arrested in the dance hall with Landers... <laughs> I'd be plumb happy, too. And you should be happy, Sheriff. You only did your duty. Who is that masked man, Sheriff? Well, I, I found a silver bullet with the note he left. That means he's the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger? This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.